So I'm, I'm sitting here just in front of Southwark Cathedral at the end of a fantastic walk along Bankside which is going to be the next video next weekend and so this is the perfect place to answer some questions it's Q&A time I didn't say that I should have said it's Q&A time if my airline goes over here it's because where the fold out screen is so it's difficult not to to be drawn that way um, thank you so much you've sent me I think something like 70 questions so I will um, answer what I can now and those that I don't answer I'll answer in another video so the Q&A is usually spent at least two videos um, so the first one says hi John I love Samuel Pepys any chance of a walk around Pepys is London there are a lot of stories to be explored there many thanks for all your wonderful videos really enjoyed your content from the west of Ireland um, yes uh, that got 10 thumbs up I think so yeah for sure I, I did some of Pepys is London with um, well it was more John Evelyn wasn't it with Ian Sinclair yeah that would be great Pepys has got a man obviously has had loads of mentions but in terms of a dedicated video that is a great idea thank you very much for that I'm just going to readjust the camera I might have to leave it in because otherwise it'll be uncomfortable that's a better framing I think um, next one will you ever do a tour for very special people question mark I'm not sure. I mean, I haven't really vetted it. I just scanned these questions of the day. Uh, a river or streets or an Ian Sinclair tour, the very special guide John Rogers tour. I don't really know what you mean. Because I've done, obviously, I've done walks with Ian Sinclair, which I hope you've seen. I've done themed walks. Do you mean like do a walk about a very special person or with a very special person? That needs a bit more clarity. I've done walks with Ian Sinclair, who is a very, very, very special person that I really like. I haven't really done many walks themed around an individual, though. That has come up before, and it is a great idea. I just, yeah, that's, it's a bit like the Peeps question in a way, isn't it? Um, hello, John, I just discovered your channel. I also do walks and vlogs around London, but in Spanish. Oh, that's really interesting. I really enjoy your videos. You inspire me a lot. Have you ever thought to do a walk around West London, areas like Chelsea, Putney, Wandsworth, Richmond? I love those areas. Congratulations on your channel and your books. Um, I've covered a few of those, so I will link to those below. But what I haven't really covered yet is... I haven't really done Chelsea. I've done a little bit of Chelsea, but not much Chelsea. A little bit of Putney, but I could do a lot more Putney. Um, and I could do, well, I've done the River Wandle, and a lot of that's a lot of Wandsworth in that one. And Richmond, I've done quite a bit of Richmond, but often it's at the end of a walk. I don't think I've started many. I started one walk in Richmond. Richmond occurs in about four videos, but I'll link to them below. All good questions. Um, if you had a time machine and your safe return was guaranteed, that's a key point, time travel, isn't it? You don't want to get stuck. Um, which era of London's history would you like to do one of your walks in? Uh, I've been, I get asked this question every Q&A and I always like to answer it. And I always give the same answer. But it's, and I talked about it recently. I would love to visit that period of time uh, after the Romans leave London when it said that the Roman city was abandoned for a period of something like 400 years. Uh, the Anglo-Saxons built their Anglo-Saxon city of Londonvic to the west around Covent Garden. So um, there is a kind of depiction of it actually in one of the Ben Aronovich books. And it, I, it's just a really interesting vision of, you know, the really grand buildings and the mosaics and the villas and, and the amphitheater and all that stuff, the, the, the temples, the idea that it was just abandoned and left and that nobody lived there. I can't believe that. I think people must, have, there must have been something, there must have been some sort of continuity, mustn't there, surely. That's the area I'd go to. Hello, John. Do you have a few do's and don'ts when it comes to walking across fields? I've never been too sure how to quickly identify what is public land and what is private land. As is often, I find that signs are few and far between. Many thanks for entertaining videos. Regards, Ian in Essex. Well, Ian, I think someone that lives in Essex would be the person that would... Because I think Essex, for me, in my walking around London, is one of the places with the worst signposted footpaths. They really don't want you walking across the fields in Essex. It often feels. And I say that compared to the other counties that neighbour London, where the footpaths are often really well marked, well signposted and well laid out. Essex is a different matter altogether. It often, if you've got an OS map, you'll often find the footpaths are blocked, they're closed, or they're overgrown, or there's this stuff. You know, it's it's they want you to they want you to do one basically in Essex. I feel like um, do some don'ts. Try and stick to the footpaths. Really, I tell you, one of the, there's lots of reasons why. I, I, I still think it's the correct thing to do. Um, and the other thing is, if you, I've often, sometimes when I haven't done that, you get stuck. You might walk a mile and realise you can't get out the other end of a field. So that's why it's always a really good idea to stick to the to the footpaths. I think your videos um, make 
uh, for an, uh, an, uh, an amazing archive for future historians and current ones. Sorry, I faffed that a little bit. But I reckon your own story might make an amazing oral history that we only get snippets of through your videos. Would you consider being interviewed by an oral history archive? Wow, that's incredible. Um, I haven't been interviewed by an oral history archive. I did an interview um, the other night, actually, at the Once They Tap for the Tap Into podcast. And it, it was about psychogeography, but in the end, I ended up talking about my childhood a bit and stuff like that, which is the first time I think I've done, really done that, particularly in an interview. Uh, but an oral history, yeah, I'd love to. I would obviously be honoured to contribute to such a thing, you know, but I haven't done it. Um, are there plans to interview David Hepworth, who praised your channel in the Radio Times? I'm sure he would take on the offer and perhaps talk to him about whether he has done any long walks. He is a music journalist, and I wonder whether you have any favourite genre or decade of music you like. Person I'm into the 80s, 90s alternative music that John Peel used to play. Answer your first question, exactly the same here. Love that era of music. That's bang on for me. I completely agree with you. Um, I would love to interview David Hepworth. I'd be honoured. Um, it would be great, yeah. That blew me away when, when David Hepworth wrote about me in the Radio Times. It was an amazing moment that I didn't anticipate at all. You know, I didn't ever think that this channel would be featured in the Radio Times, which is, yeah, I'm so overwhelmed. I would, I would love to buy David Hepworth a pint. That would be great. By the way, I think this is the best place I've ever recorded the Q&A. I feel like as well it would be quite unchristian to tell me to move on. And by the way, Southwark Cathedral isn't in the video I've just shot. It will be probably the start of the next one I make around this area. I'm making a number around this area, and I just kind of like gently ease my way into it. Yeah. Good morning, John. Any walk in Greenwich? I've never... Any walk in Greenwich? I've never been beyond the river arrival as a tourist in the area. Um, I could do more Greenwich. Greenwich features in a few videos. Um, if you just go to my channel, you can just put in Greenwich and it will show you the videos that feature But I could do more. The Greenwich is a fantastic area. Um, I've, done, I've been through there a couple of times with Ian Sinclair. Uh, any favourite public sculptures? Mine are um, A Moment Without You by Tracy Emin near Three Mills. Oh, yeah. And Sanctuary by Naomi Blake in the grounds of St. Botoff without Aldgate Church. Mine would be the one to, I'm going to mispronounce this, I'm sorry, Catherine Gwindia. Gwindia? Gwindia. I mean, Gwindia's daughter, um, that features in a video and it's over in the city. Actually, it's not far, it's sort of opposite here, really, near, near Cannon Street. That's a really beautiful, poignant little garden there with a sculpture in it to Catherine and her children who were murdered, prisoners of war and they were murdered. I can't remember the name of the king. It's one of the, one of the Henrys, I think. They were quite, quite cruel, really. Hi, John. Have you considered walking the Roman Stain Street south of the river from its first posting station at Merton Abbey, then back to London Bridge, taking the rich history of Tooting, Ballam, Clapham, etc.? That's a great idea, actually. Um, I've walked bits of Stain Street, and it's in my book, This Other London, uh, but no, it's a great idea. I'd never actually considered that because I've walked a few of the other Roman roads, but not Stain Street. Thank you very much. That's a great idea. What is the most satisfying thing about living, walking, working in London? And in your view, also what frustrates you about the place too? The most satisfying thing about um, London for me is the endless possibilities of London. That's the thing that marks London out from other places that I've experienced. I am, I've spent time in New York you know working like a week here and there so new york may have a similar thing but it doesn't have the history it doesn't have the well it has history but it doesn't it has a very different history so i think um the size of london and its history rome has amazing history paris has an amazing history but they're tiny compared to london um london is endless you'll never know it you'll never know all of it i mean i just did a little video around here around bankside i just skimmed the surface skim the surface prehistoric trackway down there, Shakespeare's Globe, the Rose Theatre. Well, there's so much stuff. And it's endless. You can leave your front door and you enter a realm of endless possibilities. And that, for me, is what marks London out for me. What frustrates me... Well, what frustrates me is... What frustrates any Londoner, really? If you're having to come in anywhere near central London, um, like the numbers of people and people just, like, dawdle and... <laughs> So there's a man who's been standing around filming himself, but getting, getting around the place can be hard sometimes. It takes a long time to get across London because of the size and the number of people. The tubes today rammed. It's a Saturday. Why are they rammed? 
and you know you know why but you think oh no really to have to do this now you've got to stand on the tube for half an hour 45 minutes that frustrates me sometimes central line's a bit naffed at the moment as well there's not many trains and it's like it's tedious you just when you just want to go somewhere i thought i'd change the angle a little bit mix it up um if you could be any historical figure who would you be and why oh if i could be any historical figure It'd definitely be someone who commanded an army and had a big sword. God, who would it be? Maybe I'd be Boudicca. Yeah, Boudicca. I'd be Boudicca. That would be amazing. I mean, obviously, but then again, everyone, those great figures, they, they didn't, you know, they didn't live long, peaceful lives. But I think Boudicca's got a tragic story, but wow. I'd be Boudicca, for the sake of argument. Or Shakespeare, Boudicca or Shakespeare. But I like the idea of leading an army into battle. I like that. Yeah. Boudicca or Shakespeare? <laughs> I'm saying Shakespeare because I've just been to the Globe. Um, cool. Love the towers and pylons. They're always great. Haven't seen them in a while. Are there any windmills, wind farms coming, in your, coming up in your ideas for walking? Windmills or wind farms? No, I went to the Horn Church windmill. When was that? That was May 2022, I want to say. Yeah, it was May 22. So the Hornchurch windmill featured in the video. Wind farms. No, but I am. I'll, I'll be going down to Ramsgate again soon, I'm sure. And there's a wind farm there. Um, but that's a that's a really good question. Uh, that was from Sean. You did a Churches of the City of London. Any plans to do other similar themed walks around the city? Perhaps following the route of the Great Fire, livery halls of the city from Rob and Camilla, long-time fans. Yeah, I mean the city, a great example actually. I could just make videos in the city of London. I haven't finished the city of London churches yet. I've got a couple to do. And I'm going to include things like Beavis Marks as well, Beavis Marks Synagogue. I don't know if there's any other non-Church of England churches in the city of London, but yeah, I want to do loads more. Um, Gardens of the City of London would be a really good one. Great Fire Walk is a, is a great idea. There's loads of ideas, isn't it? Yeah, I'm definitely. I want to do one on wells and springs of the City of London, which would be really good. Uh, what do you think should become of places like Albert Island in an ideal world? Discovering derelict and seemingly forgotten places like this is obviously exciting, but it's fair to leave places like this for a few to see. It could be used for good. Um, it's a really good question. I tend to. My, my feeling is if there's an existing community there, let the community decide and give them support. Usually the community that live there do have ideas for what should be done in these areas and what they need. And I think obviously you've got to fit it in with overall plans for the city as a whole or for the borough, but I think it should be driven by the needs of the existing community. Because often if it's been run down, like Albert Island, you get a bit of economic deprivation creep in, there might be a bit of pollution to clean up, that kind of thing. I think just doing what they do and just building loads of expensive apartments and pushing out the existing community isn't a great solution. Um, and, but there are obviously former industrial areas where, like, what do you do with it? Like, they have the Docklands, like, what were they to do with that area? And, and the Royal Docks as well. But I feel like, I feel like a good place to start certainly is the people that are living and working there currently will have ideas. They will have really good ideas. I wouldn't want to say, this is what we should do. I think go to those people, do community-led regeneration is the community-led regeneration. Would you do a walk and talk around the London Pedway system? I remember you, it's been mentioned before, isn't it? I have to look it up. Maybe, yes, maybe. I mean, it's a good idea. I've got no objection to it. Uh, have you ever been recognised by a celeb while out filming? And if so, which of you was the most surprised by a celeb while out filming? I don't think I've been recognised by a celeb while out filming. No, I get recognised by people all the time. I haven't been recognised by anyone today, actually. No, because there's lots of tourists. But most days now, I get recognised by a celeb. I get recognised by, I get recognized by um, people when I go out, which is lovely. It's always lovely to talk to people. I don't think I've been recognised. No, not by a celeb. No. No, I don't think I've seen celebs when I've been out walking either and doing this. Good day, Mr. Rogers. Hope all is well. Will you be doing any walks around the Chelsea Earls Court area this year? Thank you for your fantastic work. Similar question to the one before. I need to do that and I will do that. Great areas to walk and I will do that definitely. Don't know why I haven't. Don't know why I haven't. I'll put it on my list of walks. Thank you. Hello from Ireland. Frivolous question, I know, but... There are many distinct uh, differences amongst people from various boroughs and parts of London. Or are there, sorry, are there? Uh, E.g. north versus south, I assume east versus west differences are the more discernible wealth-based. 
No, there are. There, I think there definitely are. I think if you, I didn't grow up here. I moved here when I was 18. But I think if you, when you talk to people who grow up here, they definitely see it. I've got a friend um, who's from Tottenham, and I think there's definitely a Tottenham thing. There's a definitely a North East London thing. And, and I know with her, I recognise her patterns of speech from my, my youngest son. Um, there is a difference between the way my two kids speak, actually, maybe not. Uh, Oliver, who was about was three and a half when we moved from Islington here, and Joe, it was only about nine months when we moved to Leytonstone. Um, and yeah, they, and Joe, Joe can sound a lot more North East London. North East London has a definite. He's a, yeah, I always used to think West London people, and it's not a wealth thing, like working class people who grew up on the estates of West London has a certain vibe to them. South London, all right, mate. How you doing? You're right. Um, yeah, South London, definitely I've spotted that for sure. I used to feel South West London as well. Yeah, is the answer. <laughs> I used to think there's a different accent as well. I think I, there used to be. I certainly North East London, Walthamstow, Tottenham. There's an accent there. Absolutely love your videos. So knowledgeable and interesting. And watch. What's your favourite part of London? Colin. Almost impossible. I'm going to say where I live. Leytonstone. Second, mo second is Islington. Love Islington. Lived there. Some of my happiest times. London Borough. Of Islington, sort of the Angel, Highbury, Upper Street, Barnsbury, Canterbury. Love it all around there. Yeah, but obviously I love Leytonstone. I've always wondered about the Millbank MI5 building. I've walked past it hundreds of times. It's obviously, it's absolutely massive, like a city. Obviously no one can go in there, but it seems to be a huge part of the city are out of bounds. What are your thoughts on clandestine government buildings? I'm excited by the... <laughs> <laughs> clandestine ones, yeah. I mean, because the ones we talk about now are not clandestine, are they? MI5 now isn't clandestine. For many years during the Cold War, it was like, it wasn't up near um, Great Portland Street and everyone knew, the Russians knew, everyone else knew, but apart from the public. Um, and MI6 is an enormous building, not clandestine at all. Um, they're fascinating, aren't they? Obviously, there must be loads more. They're said to be like a restaurant in Vauxhall that was uh, an Italian restaurant that was just a cover for an MI6 facility. I don't know if that's true. I think that's from an Ian Sinclair book, Lights Out for the Territory. <laughs> I love that idea. Um, I'd love to know, yeah, where, where are they? Where are the clandestine ones, the secret ones? Um, they're obviously going to exist, aren't they? I mean, I could object to it all I like, but the, the government, they're going to have its little secret places. I fear they probably haven't got as many secret places as we think they have anymore, because everything they do now is kind of digital. Um, but I could be completely wrong. It's more like the constant surveillance we're under. <laughs> it's more of a bother. Like right now, someone could go, don't film. But it's like, I'm being filmed already like by about 28 cameras sat here. I love this question. Oh, hang on, I've lost my questions. Are you a wizard like Merlin? I would love to be a wizard like Merlin. I would also like to be a wizard like Radagast the Brown as well. Um, I'd like to think I'm a wizard. I'm going to say, yes, I am a wizard like Merlin and like Radagast and like all of the great wizards, I am a wizard. Meme that. <laughs> uh, when are you going to walk, explore World War One training trenches on Marlow Common? Wow, another book. I didn't know about that. That is amazing. I want to go and do that. Thank you very much for that, Lawrence. That's another one going on this. This is why these Q and A's are fantastic. Shall I move location? So the river's behind the camera. I've put a shot in of the river so you can see what's behind the camera there. Um, John, before my question, I wanted to tell you, um, I recommended your channel to a friend who lives in a tiny town called South Pekin in Illinois and is now a subscriber. Thank you very much. Could I suggest a walk for you? I live in South Woodford. And it's a walk I put together covering Wood Street. Yes, please do. Please pop it in the comments in this video <laughs> and, I'll, and I'll be really interested. Walked around there a bit, but I'm sure you already know that. But um, Hi John, do you know anything about the stone circle that was near St Paul's and remnants are in a glass uh, cupboard in the banking area? Any knowledge of this? I think you must be referring to London Stone, right? Which is not far from here, actually, on the other side of the river at Cannon Street. Um, I've covered that in a video and if I won't, I'll either drop it in here or I'll just link to it below, because it's the video where we go to the Catherine Gwyndia Memorial Garden, uh, which is a majestic spot. It's a fascinating story, the London Stone, whether or not it was part of a stone circle, 
who knows but um it's great and it's amazing that it's we just keep it there we don't know why but we just keep it there it's got a kind of magic allure to it great question thank you have you ever thought about exploring the Hawksmoor alignments or even walking the from hell map would make a really interesting video um, I will link you below to a walk I did around uh, Old Street St Luke's Bunhill Fields. I know that's not the complete thing, but that's part of those alignments. The Lud Heat map, I think, the From Hell map is, I think, the map from uh, Lud Heat, uh, From Hell by Alan Moore, Lud Heat by Ian Sinclair, and Ian, I think Neil Gaiman um, passed on that map to Alan Moore. Uh, and that is featured in my Bunhill Fields video. Um, yeah, but it would be great to walk it. Great to walk it with Ian, right? I think that's the ideal thing to do. Um, hi, oh, great, look at this. The lights come on for me. Hi, John, it's Andy who supplied you with the maps for the upper Walthamstow Lost River, which joins the Phillybrook. Thank you so much, Andy. They were amazing, that map. That unlocked a whole world for me. Uh, any plans to do an extended walk of that river in the future? Do you know what? Yes, I think I should. I've not walked the whole thing. in. Well, I think I might have done it that night. I can't remember, but yes. I will. It wouldn't be a video, I don't think, because I've made so many videos of the rivers around there, but I'd love to do it, maybe with a group. Maybe that could be like a group walk. Do the whole Monopoly board in 12 hours. Love that, from Lewis. Might have a problem with community chest. And which jail would it be? I like the prison. It's supposed to be in Pentonville. That's a great idea. There's so many great ideas for walks in here. Um, I love that idea. <laughs> If you could pick two historical figures to go for a walk with, who would they be and where would you walk? Oh, two historical figures. They have to be London historical figures. Well, I feel like if you're going to go for a walk in London, you want to go for a walk with William Blake, don't you? So it's going to be, have to be William Blake. And actually, um, oh, what was her name? Um, Cut Purse Mole was like... Uh, was a real character in, uh, I think, Georgian London. She was a really interesting figure. She was a, a highway, a highway woman. Going to say highwayman, a highway woman. Mole cut purse, mole cut purse. I think mole cut purse and William Blake. I think they would be great fun. Particularly the drink at the end of the walk would be a real laugh. Mole cut purse was a fascinating historical character. Um, can't believe no one's made a film about mole cut purse. Perhaps focus on the, on the rock music history of London. I like the way you've done that. It's just like an, an order. Perhaps do this. Uh, the pub where Dire Straits heard Sultans of the Swing in 1977. The pub where the Kinks album Waterloo Bridge was in Waterloo Sunset. Uh, Dartford Station where Mick Jagger first. That's not, that, I can't do that in one walk. <laughs> I'd be pinging around. It's interesting. I mean, you've listed, there's a great list of things here, Paul. I'll put your question on the screen. Uh, yeah, a rock and roll A to Z of London. That must exist, mustn't it? A rock and roll A to Z of London. I feel like that book must exist. Um, how about an update on the Olympic Park? Do you really want another update on the Olympic Park? I did one last summer. I feel like I might have to wait a year, but yeah, maybe if you think it's valid. I think I'll wait till the East Bank thing is opened before I do that. Um, there's a funny one here. What's the best coupling system for zero, zero gauge trains, Hunt or N? It's a funny one. I think tra I'm not a train enthusiast actually, but I know that train enthusiasts get really, that can be a big bone of contention. Um, hi John, I'm moving to Forest Gate in a month or so. Where should I have a pint? I think it's called the, the Forest Gate Tavern, isn't it? The Forest Tavern, the Forest Gate Tavern. It was an antique pub. I haven't been for a pint in Forest Gate for a long time. Go to the Wanstead Tap. What am I saying? Why am I saying any of that? The Wanstead Tap, the Wanstead Tap, the Wanstead Tap. That's where you should go for a pint. Forget anywhere else, go to the Wanstead Tap. If you could only drink in one London pub for the rest of your life, which would it be? And what would you be drinking? Oh, that's, an, that's such a difficult question because I drink in the Red Lion probably, and the Heathcote Arms, the two pubs I frequent the most. So I have the most story, I have more story there probably than anywhere else. So I'd say one of those. I wish I could drink Jaipur for the rest of my life. I mean, I, 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 three pints of Jaipur and I'm properly three sheets to the wind. So Thornbridge Jaipur in the Red Lion. Um, are there any towns or hamlets in London that have been swallowed up by the spread of the city over time that are older than the city itself, that are older than the city? That's interesting. So if you mean older than the Roman city, um, that's interesting. There are some place names that are said to have um, Celtic. This is a problematic term, isn't it? I think you know what I mean. Brythonic, sort of Bronze Age um, names. Like I think Penge is one. And that's one that um, I can think of off the top of my head. I think Penge is a pre-Roman uh, name. 
So that probably, I mean, there will be, yeah, there will be lots. Um, uphall camp, barking, barking is pre-Roman. Um, there's lots of actually places that are pre-Roman. Um, they're the two off the top of my head. I mean, Heathrow, for example, those are prehistoric remains. If you look at a, a, an archaeological map of London, there's prehistoric remains all around London that were swallowed up. So it, there's actually probably loads. Uh, come, now I come to think of it, actually, all along the, the southern bit of the Thames, Vauxhall, because we have, you know, we have the wonderful. Um, there was a bridge, that, uh, a causeway across the Thames at Vauxhall. The Battersea Shield, which was thrown the River Battersea, which is Bronze Age, I believe. So it's lo there's actually loads. <laughs> right, I'm going to do a couple more. This is the night that gives me a chance to say thank you to people. What gifts have you been showered with by adoring online fans? I get sent books by fans, and I love it. That's really very kind of people. I've been given two recently. Um, old books about the Thames, one by Donald S. Maxwell, the other one I can't remember the author is, someone came to my event at Hatchards I did with Ian Sinclair and they gave me that wonderful book there. Somebody once gave me some wonderful maps that they got from an old archive that were being thrown away and they saved them from a skip, huge maps, um, and they gave me those. Um, maps and old books, and I, I'm very, very grateful. Um, okay, let's do one more. Um, what's the coldest temperature um, that you've gone walking in. Coldest temperature thing I've gone walking in was when I went for a stroll in Iowa, Fairfield, Iowa, which was very ill-advised. Uh, I quickly realised I'd made a mistake before it got dangerous because everything went white. The fields were just flat and white, and I realised, oh no, I, I will get, you know, I won't be able to find my way back. And I was getting the snow was building up on me. I think it was minus 14, I think, Fairfield, Iowa, and it was a February, so really cold. I've had lots of questions, by the way, about haunting, ghosts and spooky stuff. I always get asked those questions, so I've answered them before and I don't have anything new to add to that, to be honest with you, but I appreciate the question. I'm going to end on this easy one. When are you going to walk the Chess River? I know you like rivers. I've done it. It's brilliant. I'll link to below. There's a video. What a beautiful walk. That's a perfect walk. That's a good one, actually. The person who asked for a simple walk outside London that you can do. The River Chess is great. How about Brighton? Of course, I should do Brighton. Why have I not done Brighton? So many good questions here um, and I will answer them in another Q&A video. Thank you very much for that. Don't think I'm not going to answer your question. Um, I will and there'll be a part two. Thank you very much. Really appreciate it. It's a great walk coming to you next week.